Let's talk about the, the Satz model. We know in schema theory, we know the printer, the Romanesca, and uh, Ro- Professor Robert Yerdigan has innovated a lot of uh, interesting ones and ones that are now in common parlance. Uh, can, what can we speak about French Satz model? Are there any schema? Can you demonstrate some the schema, or sorry, the Satz model that they would have used? Perhaps that would be interesting for people maybe studying Partimento today or Basso Continuo. Yeah. So for me, indeed, uh, uh, Bob Gerding and schema theory is a, is a model because he has, uh, he has um, combined uh, schema theory and style, which right. is quite important and was a model for me also to, uh, to combine the French style with specific French uh, schemata. And um, should, should we talk about some of them? Or Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, then I, I distinguish between single chords and chords progressions. So one example of such a single chord, which is very typical for a style, is, for example, this Cri chord with the augmented uh, uh, fifth and the ninth and the seventh I have played right. before. I can play it before, uh, again, maybe. If you hear this single chord, you are immediately now this has to be a French composer. And that's that's a dominant chord. Basically, it's a combination of a dominant chord with a different bass note. Okay. Because, uh, speaking technically, uh, it's a. In my case, I've taken here an F in the bass. I'm in D minor. I'm playing a dominant chord uh, above this chord. Ah. If you want, it's a very short pedal point. <laughs> <laughs> Only one moment. Right, right. Uh, okay, yeah. Would you? Should we get into a few more of them? I think those those would be very interesting. Yeah, maybe this is enough for as an example for a single chord. Uh, okay. Um, and if you go to the progressions, there are some moments uh, where, um, for example, six four chords are used. Maybe you know uh, in the. Italian yes. uh, counterpoint tradition, the 6-4 chord is a dissonant chord and you have to prepare it all the time and so on. And in France, the use of the 6-4 chord is a little bit more free. Right. For example, I, I, I take uh, the 7-6 uh, progression. I assume yes. uh, many of uh, uh, people of our audience know <laughs> this uh, yeah. progression very well. If I play only two voices, I have this um, uh, thing. And the typical technique is to fill it with thirds with the bass. Yeah. And I have a seven and six, yeah? And what the French composers are doing very often, and we also find it in the theory, is they go from the third to the fourth, third, fourth, and then we hear all the time seven and six, four chord. And later even, uh, we can find it by in Rameau, then he fills this 6-4 chord with a third. <laughs> so <that's enough. laughs> And then it's only one step, and you, you, you arrive in the world of the bass fundamental, because you yep. can put under that the quintfall. And this, for me, was really interesting that we find this technique even in some pieces by Lully. Right. He uses the progression, and then some bars later, he uses the same thing in the upper voices, and in the bass voice, he adds uh, a quintfall, a descending fifth. 